Hi everyone, Jake here, and today we are reviewing Nylia's abilities. They were just released about two hours ago, and Skin Spotlights always has the videos for the initial ability reveals. So we're just going to go through the entire kit, see what her zhush is. I did go on Reddit already, I didn't see the actual abilities, but I did read that she is the first melee bot laner, if you don't count, Shaq, if you don't count Yasuo, which you could and you couldn't. Anyway, let's just get straight into it. Uh, also, thanks Skin, Pot, Sp Skin Spotlights for uh, providing these videos. Passive Undying Joy. Passive Undying Joy. Nylia amplifies the healing and shielding of abilities of nearby allies. Allies that heal or shield Nylia gain bonus heal or shield for themselves. And when the ally champion heals or shields themselves near Nylia, she gives, she gives herself a bonus heal or shield. Okay. If Neela hits an enemy minion, she and her nearest ally champion will gain the normal amount of shared experience, plus half the sh plus half the experience that would have been lost due to sharing. Okay. So, the benefit of having Nyla in the bot lane, and the way that they're trying to push Nyla in the bot lane, to having a duo lane. But the second part of the passive, we'll go over the first part. The second part of the passive makes it so that you don't really have to worry about mean experience. So usually the bot laners, because they share the lane experience, is maybe one or two levels below or behind the rest of the other people in the game, mid chop and jungle. But her second part of her passive nullifies, well, doesn't nullify, but you know, makes it less of a harsh reality. Wait, I think she gains extra. If Nala hits the last enemy mean, she and her nearest solo champion will gain the normal amount of shared experience. Okay. Was half the experience. Okay, no, no, she doesn't get, she didn't get the normal. She gets, she gets the normal shared, but then a bit extra. So that's really, really good. That that means that she's probably gonna get six. Her and her bot laner are gonna get six before the enemy bot laner, which is really, really strong. Zillion used to have a passive which was a global, uh, map wide. No matter where you were, you'd have to just Zillion being in the game used to give everyone eight percent extra experience. So everyone on the team who had Zillion got their levels a lot, lot quicker, and. To be fair, being a melee bot laner, she probably needs something like this just to give her that little slight bit of edge or a reason to be picked bot and not be picked anywhere else. Her first part of her passive as well, Nella employs a healing. So she has like an AoE aura that include that buffs healing and shieldings. Allies that heal on Nella get a bonus heal. So when someone heals Nyla, that person gets a heal as well and or the shield. And when an ally champion heals the shields themselves near Nyla, she gives herself a bonus heal shield. So it kind of like, say if you're playing Soraka, yeah, and you're really low and she's really low, you could still heal yourself or you could heal Nyla and you'd still both get a heal backwards and forwards. So you just need to be near her and if you throw out a heal, you're going to get a heal. She's going to get a heal. Lee Sin's going to get a heal. Everyone's going to get a heal or a shield and she gets... Uh, she gets bonus to that as well, so she amplifies the effects of that. I mean, that's kind of this this passive itself is kind of forcing her into a duo lane because what else she got? Her her passive, this passive is for a duo lane. The you know, I mean, she could rely on a jungler maybe if there was a jungle Ivan but I don't think that would work out really well if she's going to single lane. It depends if she's got any other passives on her Q, W, E, and R that will maybe push her into a solo lane. But currently, props to Riot, they're keeping to the melee bot lane. Let's keep it going. Okay, nice animations. We'll watch the animations first, then we'll... I love the hair. TF probably likes to be whipped, let's be real. Oh? There was initial big whip and then... Okay, wait, 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 let's go back. Formless Blade, active. Nyla, Nyla, Formless... Nyla's Formless Blade strikes on the line, damaging all enemies hit. Hitting an enemy will briefly increase Nyla's attack range and attack speed and empower her basic attacks, causing them to splash in a coal and deal additional damage. Let's see that. So she has the initial whip and then it makes her next basic attacks empowered, which uh, like an AoE attack just gives her attack range and attack speed that's just that's pretty decent um i think for a melee bot laner they would need a kind of some kind of range just a little bit of range and this seems to be the one where it gives her a little bit more range on the auto attacks so like say if she's getting poked out underneath a uh, a minion wave versus an enemy caitlin she can use this and she can actually farm pretty safe well not safe she can run safer than she could have if she didn't have something that increased her attack range 
It also has a passive, attacks and ability damage against champions, ignored some of their armor, and heal Nyla for part of the damage dealt. This effect scales with crit chance and converts access healing into a shield. Okay. So she just heals from everything. Her basic attacks, her abilities. She might be a crit hero because, oh my god, she gets extra. The scales, this effect scales with crit chance. Do you think Nyla's the reason that healing was nerfed across the board? Because they were like, oh, we want to release Nyla, but the problem is, here's the problem. Healing is fucking ridiculous. Oh, mate, okay. Sure, do you know what, sure. She's got a heal passive, she's got a heal passive on her. Hopefully she doesn't have any more healing passives, but I really like that cube. I mean, it's just a bread and, probably going to be a bread and butter. Oh, this was the auto attack negation. Use it again. Okay, I mean, it's a simple ability. It lasts for quite a while. Oh my god, that lasts for a while. That's like three seconds, maybe? W, Jubilant Veil. Nyla shrouds herself in a Jubilant Veil and briefly gains bonus movement speed, taking reduced, takes reduced damage, magic damage and dodges all income, incoming basic attacks. Touching an allied champion hides them in the veil as well, but they'll be protected for a shorter period. Another ability that affects or buffs the ally that, help, that helps you. So say if you're in a 1v2 and um, you've got a Braum support, you engage with her E and Braum will jump to you with your E and you use your W and you'll both get a uh, reduced magic damage and dodging all income base, basic income attacks. So it's kind of like a Jax E, which is the, the circle, Conrad really does, but it doesn't stun, but it does give it to someone else, which is a very strong ability. That is so, so, so strong. Again, keeping her alive against ranged. I think a lot of her kit to be a melee bot laner has to be negating range carries. Or at least keeping herself alive. So I think that's why she's got a lot of healing in her kit as well. Because she in lane she's just going to be poke, 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 poke. Because in realistically, how is this woman going to deal with um, Caitlyn? Like she's going to be up the turret all the time. She's going to have to heal herself. But she's got basic attack negation, which can also affect the allies. Heals and shields. More heals and shields. Uh, let's see what the E. I'm guessing the E is going to be a dash or a jump or something. Okay, what else? Oh my god, it's a double one. I think it does. Oh, it must have power the basic attacks. Okay, E. Slipstream. Uh, slipstream lets Nyla dash through target unit, traveling a fixed dis distance every time and damaging all enemies she passes through. She can start store up to two charges at once. Okay. Um, it'll be interesting to see if she can like go over walls. But having two charges is really good because then you can like choose and you want to, you know, you want to do it. Kind of like reminds me of the older Carly, which used to have like a, a charge and you used to have to wait if you wanted to do it. That was a really fun ability. I did like older Carly. Um, cast form display during slipstream to pull a wave in your path, dealing damage after a quick lay and granting form displays in hand. Basic attack. Okay, so that's her Q form display. So I'm um, guessing once you do this initial this initial slap if you pressing e whilst you do the initial slap like like give it a sec like this then you get a little wave that does damage and you still get your basic act. okay i like that two abilities that synergize well with each other having a dash is just always good and honestly i don't think this champion would survive bot lane if it did not have a dash uh, that's the only reason I think Yasuo can work bot lane is because he's got that the E and he's got his wind wall that helps him out pretty well. This is quite similar to Yasuo in the sense that it's a Q that's a enhanced basic attack that can happen. A W which is a negation of basic attacks and then an E which is a dash. Let's see what the ultimate is. When we did look at the ultimate last time in the trailer it looked like Diana's ultimate so I'd be interested to see what this is. Okay, that did just look like a Diana ultimate. So she pulls, she does like a little effect first, slowing and then pulling. Ah, Apotheosis. Nyla unleashes a surge of power, lashes her whip in an area around her, and with a final burst, pulls enemies in towards the center. Apotheosis heals Nyla for part of the damage dealt, converting any access into she healing into a shield. This effect scales with crit chance and is granted to all nearby allies. So her passive can give allies a shield. A W can give allies a shield, which is basically a negation, like a damage reduction and a basic attack negation. Her R can give everyone a shield. She's going to be... I think she's going to be strong, especially, like, 
so, say Sona, for example, Sona has a shield and a heal on her W. So like, is it giving her a double? Is she getting like a double, double trouble? That sounds really, really strong. So she can also buff and keep her allies alive because um, every time Nalia heals as well, not only like Hampi, she has nearby abilities, allies that heal, and then when an ally champion heals or shields himself near Nalia, she gives herself a bonus deal. Really, really good. She's an amplified, she, she just amplifies. I mean, all shields got nerfed across the board in the durability update, but she's just going to be amplifying. I kind of dig it. And the, uh, the, ult, the ult's nothing special, but it is going to be a really good engage. And especially with these two E's, when you use your E, and you can do two charges, so you can get quite a lot of distance, I'm guessing. But you have to be careful because it has to be a targeted unit. So you have to dash through someone. But let, let me see. Do you dash behind them after you use it or you end up in front of them? You end up on top of them or behind them. But uh, then as soon as you'd like literally use that, you go in with your ultimate. Phew, give everyone a shield. Use your Q. Get the basic attacks that sweep. By then when your CC is over with and hopefully you'll have someone else to CC in as well. They're like, ah, oh, okay, we can get Nanali now. And you're like, uh, uh, uh. Use your W and you get the basic attack negation. All whilst you're serving out shields and heals to literally everyone else. Because of your Q giving everything a shield. I mean, giving everyone a heal. Increasing with attack damage. Uh, yeah. I'm digging it. I'm digging it. I think it's gonna. It's, it's, it's either gonna be so hit or so miss. I don't think it's ever gonna be in that like center spot. It's either gonna be such a hit that it's gonna be so good, or it's gonna be such a miss. It's gonna flop, and she's gonna get moved to a solo lane. People will try and play a solo lane anyway. Um, if I was gonna see her a solo lane, where would it be? Probably like mid or top. I mean, it's just Yasuo with utility. It's utility Yasuo, in my opinion, but without the double crit scaling. Instead of the double crit scaling, she has healed and shield scaling. Thus, the reason for her being in bot lane. And I think it would be a detriment if you try and pull her with like a mage support. Like, she is an enchanter. She needs to be with the enchanters, you know what I mean? Like, she is gonna... Oh, I think she's gonna work so well with a lot of them. And I'm very, very hype. Maybe it can bring like someone like Oriana into the bot lane. Maybe it could bring someone like Annie into the bot lane. Because if she's going to heal and shield, and Annie, Annie and Oriana both have an E, which shields people. Um, I don't know. I think it could come up for some wacky comps. We'll just have to see. But it is very, very interesting. Her splash arts are here. So let's see what she's got. Oh, and she's got like a bloody storm drag in the background. That is beautiful. Let me just print screen. And she's the star guardian. And she's got a little pupper. She's got a little pupper. Oh, look how cute he is. Okay. That is adorable. Uh, thank you, Skim Spotlight, for this, by the way. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm just going to take a print screen for my thumbnail. There we go. Um, very hype. Having a Star Guardian skin as your first skin is going to immediately bump your play rate up, regardless if you're bad or good, because Star Guardian is probably one of the popular skin lines of all time, other than maybe KDA. So, yeah, she's going to get a lot of traction, and I think a, a lot of people are going to like her as well, because she's got that survivability, because she's got that, like, fluidity, no jokes on the war. But, yeah, I'm excited to see how she turns out. I'll be waiting for the PB update tonight, and then I'm probably going to watch some YouTubers play, see how it actually works out. And yeah, I'm down. I'm, I'm digging this. I am very much digging this. I really, I didn't think her passive would be like that, but fuck yeah. <laughs> Extra experience, healed and shielding. Oh, so good. Oh. It's going to make late game team fights as good as well, because she's got an AoE ult, which gives everyone a shield as well. It's kind of like a severe ult, which is severe gives, it says given a shield. It gives everyone a bit of movement speed, you know, that kind of situation where it's like, you're dealing damage and you're going in and you are the carry, but you are also offering utility to your team. Let's go. I'm ready. Anyway, my dears, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next one.